everybody. Hopefully you all can hear me and uh, you know everything's looking good because we're trying something brand new today. I'm Jody Costa. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Barcoding Incorporated. Barcoding is an organization dedicated to helping others build efficiency, accuracy, and connectivity. We are a supply chain company that's, that's really focused on automation and innovation. And today we have a wonderful session for you, something that's brand new because we are live. We are live uh, just down the street from our headquarters in Baltimore, Maryland in Germantown. And we're here with our partner, Zebra Technologies. Zebra has been kind enough to let us into their very cool facility here to give you guys some sneak peeks and behind the scenes on some of the latest technologies on how to empower your supply chain with machine vision. But first we're gonna start with my dear friend, Anita Gannon, and we're gonna show you a little bit of a sneak peek on their experience center. So Anita. Thank you, Jody, and hello to everybody. Um, very excited. Welcome to the Zebra Germantown Experience Center. Um, my name is Anita Gannon, and I am a Zebra Channel Account Manager, supporting Barcoding Inc. for the past seven years now. So I've got to know them well and understand all the benefits they bring to our customers in the supply chain. We're standing in our RFID demo room in the Germantown facility, and this is normally where we would bring customers in to show them different technology, uh, talk to them about the outcomes they want to accomplish to improve their business operation. We would have access to deeper product specialists, to show demonstrations, um, and talk through whatever your business outcomes uh, are that you want to accomplish. Um, also in the Germantown facility, we host our fixed industrial scanning and machine vision technologies, which are new products for Zebra, uh, less than a year old. So we're very excited to have this opportunity now to show you with barcoding uh, these solutions. Also in the facility, we're gonna go take a walk now and we'll see the lab environment. And this is an area where you can set up and test out your own proof of concept. So this is an active live lab with resources to help you accomplish your business goals. So should we take a walk now and take a look at the Yeah, right, yeah, absolutely. Go. So everyone who's been who's out there listening, if you're familiar with our Huddle series, um, and if you aren't, you can check out barcoding.com. But if you are familiar, you know that we love questions. So if you're out there listening and you have questions as we go through this, you can use the chat and we'll get those questions answered. So um, don't be shy about participating. So. Come on with us as we go down the hall. So one of the things I did want to mention is, yeah. of course, um, you can work with your barcoding rep to schedule a tour of the lab or um, or the demo room. And also we accommodate virtual. So if you're not able to travel, you don't have the time, whatever it might be, we can help you accomplish those business goals with a virtual uh, tour as well. Awesome. Thank you, Anita. Love you guys. Come this way. We're heading down the hall. Again, we're in Germantown. This is the Zebra Technologies Experience Center. And also where we're going now is the lab. So the lab is where we're going to start to learn more about machine vision and fixed industrial scanning. So come on in. And as you can see, it's quite a big space. Um, so come this way a little bit further. And I'm going to introduce you to a few more folks from Zebra who are going to take us through some really interesting live uh, demonstrations of the technology. So thank you, Anita, again, for showing us the RFID Experience Center. And thanks for joining me in the in the lab. Um, today I have with me Boris. Boris, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Boris Orango. I'm with Zebra. I'm a focus on fixed industrial scanning and machine vision. I'm a channel account manager supporting for the East and supporting our partners like Barcoding Inc. involved in uh, different applications, testing and concepts also working with our, our sales engineers and working with our end users, our customers, to make sure that we assess and properly fit in the right fix scanner and machine vision products. Awesome. Well, I, I uh, this is quite a change up, you know, we're here, we're live, uh, we're, we all can't wait to get to the technology, but I wanted to set the stage for everybody because not, not everyone is familiar with machine vision or even fixed industrial scanning, even though, you know, it seems like a natural fit for Ziva. So maybe we could start with a couple definitions. Um, tell us, tell us just at the basic level, what what are these technologies? Yeah. So fixed scanning is um, basically the ability for you to scan a barcode image. It's an image-based capture technology to scan a barcode uh, without a handheld 
device. It's, it's, it's a fixed position device um, uh, designed and uh, programmed for a purpose, to read a barcode and to do another function along with uh, reading that barcode. You may want to do something else with it. We can talk about that later. And it's usually hooked up into a PLC, um, a programmable logic controller within a process of the manufacturing or a warehouse environment. Uh, machine vision is an automated um, uh, an automated inspection or uh, analysis of a um, of of a part or of, of anything you want to actually analyze, and then it also communicates into a programmable logic controller, a PLC, in a manufacturing process. So it's doing an inspection typically for quality control. That's awesome, and I think. Probably the wheels are going to start turning for you guys as you as we start to have some conversations. But based on those definitions, this seems like a natural fit for Zebra Technology. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you guys got into this? I, yep. think, I think we said uh, maybe about a year ago. Yeah, of course. So we've been at this for about three years, but we did launch in June of last year. So fixed industrial scanning is a natural adjacent for Zebra. We do scanning with our handhelds. We're, we're great and we're a leader in that space. So fixed industrial scanning is a close adjacent and a technology that we can definitely do and we're doing right now. And our customers have been asking for this. So a lot of times our customers have asked for fixed scanning or some solution around uh, an overhead scan function, something to free up uh, people from doing something that's kind of tedious or task too task oriented. And so it's just um, a progression of our evolution and we're innovating as well and becoming relevant. The machine vision is an adjacent to fixed scanning. So with the addition of algorithms and artificial intelligence, those that programming software that is added to the image-based camera itself is just a natural progression within that road, within that portfolio. And so uh, Zebra strategically said, we will invest heavily into this space. It is a priority for Zebra to uh, grow in this area. The market is of course a large market that, uh, that is, um, that is growing and our customers again are asking for this and there's a good demand for this type of product. Yeah, I mean, it's it's right down the middle of the plate for barcoding too, right? All about efficiency, accuracy, connectivity and really bringing things together uh, for folks and automating things that might have been uh, in the past, uh, either maybe potentially inaccurate or inefficient um, or just plain tedious uh, for certain types of roles where those people could then you know, go do something more value added for the Right. I mean, you want to talk us through a couple examples, maybe of let's start with the fixed industrial scanning and where that can have impact. Yeah. So the fixed scanner uh, helps alleviate a lot of the pain points today of what customers yourself are experiencing. So the fact that there's a shortage of labor, um, the requirements that are put on with our warehouse and with our manufacturing process and with the um, with the increase in online ordering and order fulfillment having to be done instantaneously next day delivery, warehouses are having to run faster and more efficiently. The fixed scanner helps with that. The fixed scanner frees up your people from having to do something tedious. Um, you can repurpose your person to do something else, but where someone might've taken, um, you know, one hour to read, uh, you know, 500 packages. Now with the fixed scanner, you can read a thousand packages in an automated process and speed up the operations within a warehouse. Right, and we're going to so stay tuned. We're going to see that, which is really, really cool. Um, so on the machine vision side, though, I think uh, this is probably something you see a lot in manufacturing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so machine vision with the inspection, the need for um, inspection and quality control, you definitely have uh, that need uh, for, for, for making sure that things are produced and manufactured properly. The machine vision algorithms allow us to properly inspect the part so you can actually look at a, a gasket or a, a, an assembly of um, something that's been placed together and make sure that it's ready for the next process before a mistake is made. And, and so machine vision connected to a, a motion controller can actually kick out a bad product or a bad assembly if it detects that the position of the ring is not incorrectly or there's a missing screw. Um, the machine vision Products we have have different lighting options with uh, blue light, red, white, and different algorithms to actually detect a flaw. So uh, de de depending on the material that it's expecting, you can shine different light and have different filters on the camera, on the imager, 
and that allows you to get the reflection or the different gaps between an assembly process. We have measurement tools, um, edge detection, different algorithms that don't need to get into too much, but there are about 40 different algorithms in our products today, and we'll be adding artificial intelligence to it to as well to it for, so that learning deep learning can be programmed into it. So if, if, you know, I, I'm, I, I like to talk about all these technologies. I may not be able to actually you know, produce all these technologies. Do, you, do our customers need to know about algorithms and learning in order to get invested in something like this? No, not at all. Okay. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> That's good not, to know. Not at all. So um, all they need to know is that our cameras can do that. And one of the cool things about Zebra and what we're coming out with is that you can have a camera do the simplest of functions. And then if you want to repurpose that camera to do a more complex function as your uh, needs grow or as you see fit, you can actually program that camera using the same software to add on to it. Um, so there's definitely the ease of use that we have with our software that comes along with it. It's different from what other competitors are offering, which are kind of more complex. So some customers want to do this themselves, and that's fine. But um, you may want to have barcoding do it, 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 do it for you and do the integration into a PLC environment, into the network, or to a laptop or whatever, a display board where you can actually see what's going on. You as a customer, so you can actually monitor the performance of the camera. You can see what's happening. All the metrics can be displayed on our HMI tool, which comes with the license of the software. Um, so you just need to know that it's functioning and you can see its performance and make sure that you have the uptime and that your production is uh, running as you need it to be. For those who may not know, HMI tool stands for? Oh, uh, a human uh, machine interface. It's basically uh, a window-based uh, display of what's going on in the, what it's, the camera is doing. So you can actually see the, the good passes of an inspection process or a read of a barcode and you can see the fails. You can actually see from the fails why it fails and you can actually monitor the uptime of the camera. You can monitor the health of that camera. It's visible. It's basically visibility into your warehouse with that camera itself and making sure that the operation is happening properly. That's awesome. So in terms of uh, the market around machine vision, fixed industrial scanning, how does Zebra kind of fit in? What, what are you, what's important to kind of know if you're out there investigating these types of systems for your company today? Yeah, it's important to know that you're working with a vendor that and a provider that is giving you um, something that works for what you need. And one of the things that we do with Barcode is do the proper assessment of your needs and making sure that we give you a product that fits in well, what, what that need is. Um, we do run through a process. Um, what we wanna do first is assess. We wanna do a, 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 you know, an ROI, return on investment type analysis and prove that out through a proof of concept. So we have the discipline and the methodology together, Zebra supports barcoding, and we make sure that there's, uh, there's the business supports the investment for the camera. Yeah, we talked a little bit actually earlier, of course, we were prepping for today, and we were talking a little bit about some of the, if, if folks are familiar with doing uh, a type of assessment and a proof of concept and an ROI analysis for RFID infrastructure, I would say, that this may feel like a familiar process. Is that fair to say? That's true. So it's kind of like how we uh, do it for RFID. So if you have done an RFID implementation, where you definitely want to prove it out first before you deploy it into your whole warehouse. That's what we do too is for fixed electrical scanning for machine vision. Um, so, you know, typically it takes about three to six months to do a proof of concept. We've been doing that already, uh, putting and installing two cameras, three cameras on the production line and proving out that uh, return on investment to make sure that it's positive. Awesome. And that's something, so for those of you who are familiar with barcoding and can work with us, you know that we take our, our process very, uh, very, uh, we just we take it to heart. So we follow it internally and everything that we're saying to our customers, we actually follow ourselves. Um, but that delivery framework that we use, it's consistent, it's repeatable, and it's really meant to help you implement solutions like this that are, uh, that do need that proof of concept, that do need to be vetted out 
Um, so that delivery framework that Barcode Inc. brings to the table will help you go through a series of steps. So we will talk to you about your process, your people, you know, kind of your goals for the technology. We'll go through a build phase and an assessment phase together, um, deployment support, and then ongoing, we'll look for new opportunities for continuous improvement. So it's a great partnership that Barcode and Zebra bring to the table so that you can actually take advantage of some of these new advances in camera technology. So we're really excited. Um, and I know that everyone's waiting for the like live demos, but I have a, a couple more questions. And you, you can come on, you can go ahead and get that up, Armando, it's okay. Um, so I just wanna know, just off the cuff for us, what, what makes you so excited about it? Why do you get up in the morning and get excited about it? It's industrial scanning. Yeah, I think it's because, um, well, not only because it's cool technology and it's new and it's uh, gonna help our customers tremendously, but it's also the difference we're providing in the industry. So our cameras, as I mentioned before, um, can do both fixed scanning and machine vision at the same time, um, one or one or the other. You can program the camera to do just fixed scanning or to do a machine vision. This is the FS20. This is the lower end of our scale. We do have uh, larger cameras like the FS40, which is right here. And you can tell that um, they get bigger, more feature rich with these, with lighting and, and uh, different megapixel type uh, add-on so um, basically I'm excited because on one platform you can get both fixed scanning and machine vision this is a lot different from what the industry provides only very very few other competitors do that at the price that we can do it at and it's got well not many competitors have USB-C ports on the back of their cameras you can actually hook this up to a display monitor um, and you can connect to it if you're going to program the camera the additional ports that we have the features that we have with this and the value that we provide, Zebra supports this fully with our partners. When we go to market, we completely support and get engaged. You have a team of people inside of Zebra that are just focused on fixed scanning, and we're providing a very awesome solution to the industry right now. One of my favorite words, awesome. Um, fantastic. Uh, no, I mean, you know, we're really excited about this too, and uh, barcoding, you know, this, this just feels uh, like the right fit, especially during a time where there's more more pressure than ever before on supply chain uh, manufacturing for housing to deliver. So it seems like a great time to investigate this. So final-ish question. Um, I, I think that all this sounds wonderful. The technology, all of my supply chain geeks out there, I know you love the technology, but what does this really translate to for our customers I mean, what, what kinds of things are you are really seeing in terms of those, those real business outcomes? So <clears throat> with what we've seen already on the scanning uh, ability, so if you were to have an overhead scanner to speed up your process on uh, filling an order uh, in your warehouse um, or doing an inspection, that translates into getting the product faster to your customers. It means getting the right product with the right labeling to your customers, making sure there's no defects or no recalls back to your customers and uh, or from your customers to you. And it, it translates into efficiencies and, and speed and you need to keep up with the industry and what's going on right now. So I think it's just becoming more relevant and becoming competitive in the environment in which we're in now. Yeah, and I'll just throw my plug in there because this is my field. Uh, this is all about experience. And when you're talking about your brand out there in the marketplace, Anything that helps build trust and credibility, which is exactly what these things do, that's that's solid gold to, in today's world. So, um, you know, I, I any final thoughts before we move into the, the fun stuff? Uh, no, I just that's all. I think okay. we said a lot, and uh, just keep in mind these. You know, what's coming up a lot in our in what we've seen is the overhead scanning of uh, needs for order fulfillment, the inline scanning, the ability to verify a print. So this is becoming very very common the simple uh, task of verifying that the print quality is there on a label to make sure that in the supply chain, it can be read uh, properly or looked at to verify that, hey, this barcode is, is identifying a certain product. Is it what it says on the label? Doing that check, uh, that is a key inspection and quality control measure that you have to put out in the industry today, especially in food and beverage. Uh, and the other thing is the inspection, right? Just making sure that 
whatever you're inspecting, the quality of your product that's goes, going out the door can be done at a very good value with these products. Thank you so Thank you. much, Boris. Armando, come over here. <laughs> be joining me here on camera first. Hi. Hi. Um, so I, I know that uh, today is a very special huddle because we're live. And this is live TV, so everything you're seeing is live. <laughs> um, but we we wanted to actually show you. So so Boris and I just kind of walked you through to give you a little bit of context. But now we're going to put that context into action. So we want to show you how this technology, how it really works, and and give you some some hands on, or at least a video on yeah. insight. So Armando, maybe give everyone a little introduction to yourself. Yeah, my name is Armando Lopez. I'm the senior sales engineer for the East Coast. Basically, what I do with Zebra is uh, I support Boris and I support our partners. Uh, for testing, right, making sure that an application is going to work uh, before it's, it's purchased. Right? Awesome. Well, I, I, I let's get to it. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like we should get to it, right? Yeah. So come this way. You can see that the Experience Center, the lab here, they have a huge conveyor belt set up as well as tons of different ways to demo. And as Anita mentioned, this is a center that you can come to. And even if you physically can't come here, we can do virtual uh, meetings here. So keep that in mind as, as you start to see what we're about to show you is that we can schedule barcoding. We can schedule uh, a time for you to come down here to Germantown, Maryland, and actually participate. So yeah. all right, Armando, enough yeah. of me, enough of my fun, please. Yeah, I'm going to show you guys uh, three or four, four different examples of what these devices can do. So the first one we're going to see here, we have a rotation table that is not only checking on the top, but also checking things on the side. One of the purpose of machine vision barcode reading is maybe to do inspections that cannot be done by a person, right? This one is spinning, maybe not super fast. It could be spinning faster. Imagine in a manufacturing environment where you have a bottle a second, maybe that is moving, or a couple bottles per second, and you cannot scan this right yourself with a handheld, or maybe you can, but then you're really good. <laughs> But you know, imagine the situation where we need to scan every single product that is coming out of the manufacturing environment or boxes that are moving really fast in a conveyor belt, which is something that we're gonna do. So what we have in here is we have uh, here the FS20 that is reading every single barcode in these scans, right? There's a photo eye sensor here on the side and the photo eye sensor is uh, telling the camera, hey, there's a, there's a product in front of you, take a picture, analyze it, find the barcode, right? And as you can see here in the HMI that Boris was talking about, these green boxes, right? They show where the barcode is being read and this is the actual data, right? This is the data that would be important for you, for your database to make an action. Here, for example, you see a green light, you see a red light because some of these barcodes are defective. So of course, the purpose of these devices is uh, to do an action, right? They're gonna find something and then they're gonna tell another device uh, if something is good or, or, or bad, right? Maybe to kick it out of the production. So this is one of our demos, really cool. And this one is to show speed, right? It doesn't look very fast. We can make it faster, but you know, we want to keep it safe, okay? Uh, let me show you another one. So that one that, one that we just saw is a barcode reading, right? But these devices also can do machine vision or quality control. So what we have in here, if you want to take a closer look, we have four different bottles in here, right? And these four different bottles, uh, they have different defects, right? There's one that is good and the other ones are defective. Now, this could be done maybe by a human, right? Someone could take the bottle and make sure that everything is correct, that everything is fine, that everything is there. But again, right, what if we want to make sure that uh, all of the bottles are inspected and they are moving really fast, right? That's very difficult for a person to do, right? Or what if we want to not only do the inspection, but also save the image, maybe for your customer, uh, saving the image is really important, right? To have a record, to have proof that something was done. So there's where machine vision becomes really relevant, really important. So let me show you if you want to move here so we can see the screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put these in here and then I'm going to trigger the camera, right? This is a good inspection. In here, you can see that it's saying pass. So this is a good bottle, 
right now what I'm doing is I'm triggering, right? But of course, uh, this would be automated, would be maybe a photo eye sensor uh, or some sort of uh, device that tells the camera when to shoot, right? So this is a good bottle, right? Yeah. It's passing the inspection. Now I'm gonna put this one in here and then I'm gonna trigger, right? And this one is not good. You see that it fails, it's red, but why is this failing? It looks good, exactly, right? It's hard to notice for a person. But this one, if you notice, the, the, the cap is not set correctly, right? It's tilted. So this is a defect, right? It needs to be all the way down. This is hard to see for a person, right? But a camera can check. This one here might be a little bit more obvious, right? It's gonna trigger again. And this one is missing the cap, right? That's why it's failing, it's missing the cap. The... There's many things, many disclaimers or labels that need to, uh, or text that has to be in the label that is very important for the consumers, right? Maybe the expiration date, maybe some sort of a notice, you know, like this is a gluten-free product or this contains wheat or something, right? So there, there's text that needs to be there on the label. I'm gonna go back and put the right bottle again. And then when we trigger, this one passes. This is a good bottle. This is a machine vision inspection, right? Presence, absence, quality control, reading the barcode and reading the text. That makes sense? Really cool, right? Now we're gonna do one more example and let me show you. So this one in here at Zebra, we love handheld readers, right? We love them. And also Barclay, they love handheld readers. They are great. They are not going away, right? But here there's a different approach, right? Maybe what I need to do is I need to scan all these packages and feel the toes, right? I need to feel this board. Of course, this could be done with a handheld scanner and that's fine, but maybe that's a two, three steps process, right? Maybe I need to take the scan gun, I need to scan it, I need to put it away, I need to grab the package, and I need to put it here, right? And that's fine. But what if we could use both of our hands and read the barcodes without having to touch some other device, right? So what we have in here is we have, maybe you didn't notice, but here we have our FS70 with a bar light. And this one is taught to, to read a barcode when something changes on the screen, right? When something changes on the image, it's gonna trigger by itself. It's really cool. So what I'm gonna do here is I put the package, and this. I'm gonna put this one over here, and then this one, I can read it. So I can use both of my hands. Imagine if you have a really large box, right? If I need to put it in here, Maybe I will need to scan it and then put it away to be able to use both of my hands. When with this approach, we can just do it like this, right? Also, this technology allows for a very large depth of field, right? So even if you have, you know, if a person is doing this, maybe you might be thinking, well, what if the person is very tall? Or maybe the person is a little short, right? This is gonna be a different height. So that's not a problem. We have a very large depth of field, right? So this is another implementation of uh, the fixed industrial scanner. Usually a fixed industrial scanner is not meant to interact with a person much. It's more for the, per for the purpose of full automation, but this is more like a hybrid approach. We can do both, right? They are not like enemies, right? We're all friends. And you might be thinking, well, that looks really cool. And Armando, he knows this very well. Maybe it took him like four days to set this up. No, it took me a couple of minutes and I don't lie. And I tell the truth even when I lie. <laughs> so let me show you how we can set up this. So this is my final demo, I promise, right? Maybe you're getting tired of me. So, oh, hey. <laughs> so what we have in here is another model, right? It's very small, maybe it's hard to see, but there's a reader in here, it's very small. This is the FS10, right? Now, maybe our application is we need to read that code, that very, very small code on this bottle, right? How are we gonna set it up? We're gonna use Aurora, right? That's our software. And this software is good, not only to set up barcode, but also to set up machine vision. You can use the same free software for both technologies, okay? And it's a very simple three-step process. First, we need to get an image, right? That's the very first step. All these are image-based technologies. First, we need to get an image. Then we need to set up the algorithm 
And then we need to set up outputs, right? Very easy. So this is Aurora. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to manage. And what we want is we want to create a new job, right? And I'm gonna call this one test. Put good names, right? Don't call it test. And we can put notes. I'm gonna write in here, this is a note. Write good notes, right? Maybe writing here, what is the application doing? Uh, what's today's date? And who did it, right? So there's a record of who made this program. I'm gonna uh, click in here, create job, okay? And then this is the interface, right? It's a very clean interface. We really put a lot of effort in making Aurora easy to set up, easy to deploy, and easy to maintain, right? We want Aurora to be easy to use. I work with many different software packages, and I can tell you that I really appreciate when a piece of software is easy to, is easy to use, right? Because that translates the engineering count. Right? Now, we got an image. And it looks pretty bad, right? It's like, well, that reader doesn't work. Well, we just, we're just starting setting it up, right? What do we need to do here? We need a good image, right? What is a good image? A good image is an image where you can see the, the, the target or the subject very clearly that is sharp and in focus and that it has enough light. This one looks very blurry and maybe a little dark. Well, how do I set it up? I'm not an expert. Well, I'm gonna click auto-tune. And auto-tune, what is going to do? as the name imply, it's gonna out of tune, right? So what it's doing is shooting lights at different intensities. It has a liquid lens technology that is gonna find the perfect focus for you. And we're ready to go. We have already an image and it's already reading a barcode, right? I only click one button, right? Everybody can click one button, even Boris. No, now, now that this is working, I'm just gonna click on deploy. And this program is done. Now, it is reading. Well, if I trigger in here, you hear the beeping, right? Maybe you don't, but it's beeping and it's reading the code. If I block it with my hand, it's not gonna read, right? It doesn't beep, I'm gonna fail, right? I'm gonna click again and it's reading. Super easy. Now, this is Aurora, which is our free software to program, to create the recipe. Is this what you would see in the production line? Maybe not. But what you can see running the production line, you can monitor what the camera is doing in the HMI, right? The HMI is also free to use. And the way you access the HMI is with the IP address of the reader, right? Let's say you have in your facility 20, 50, 100 readers. Each one is going to have an IP address. And you can access and monitor what the reader is doing with the right credentials using the IP. So that's how easy it is to set up uh, an application with Aurora. We really put a lot of effort to make it easy to set up, easy to deploy, and easy to maintain. We're gonna do one more demo. I told you that I was gonna stop Woo! doing demo, right? But uh, maybe I lied, but I tell the truth even when I lie. Right? We're gonna do one more demo. Now, what we have in here at Germantown, and you're welcome to come here and test, right? For free, is we're gonna, Scan boxes, right? Let's say you have an. Uh, so, come on. So what we have in here, we have many boxes, right? Uh, with labels, right, with barcodes. And up there might be hard to see, but there's three readers up there, right? And there's three bar lights that we provide, that we sell, right? And the purpose of this example is to show, you know, try to exemplify a real manufacturing logistic facility where all these boxes are flying by in the conveyor belt. And we want to read them all maybe for sorting or maybe to make sure that all the shipments are gonna be done. So we're gonna turn on the conveyor belt. It's gonna be a little bit loud, but what we wanna see is we wanna see those green LED lights. Right now they're going like crazy, right? Because there's a code underneath the cameras. So they're saying, hey, yes, I can, I can read the code, right? So you're gonna see while the boxes are moving that the green lights are turning on.
Wow, that was amazing. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. Go on the ride. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Armando, thank you so much. That was amazing. And hopefully everyone took away a ton from those demonstrations. I know I learned a lot. Uh, I also learned a little interesting fact about you behind oh. the scenes. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> everyone hates the spontaneous question, but that's what huddles are about. So, uh, so I, I just was fascinated. I, and there might be folks out there watching this who also are interested in photography. You seem to have an interest in photography. Do, do you, can you talk a little bit how this, you know, kind of matters to you and how uh, you kind of tie those passions together? Yes. Uh, I don't have a lot of hobbies, but uh, one of them is photography. And uh, something that I noticed uh, when I started working with this technology is that uh, there's a lot of similarities in photography, right? Uh, the very first step uh, setting up uh, uh, fixing those from scan scanning or, or vision system is we need to get agreement, right? And the way to get a good image is we have to care about lighting. We have to care about the field of view or framing composition. Uh, we have to care about the uh, focus or depth of field or lenses. Mm -hmm. And all of that really is uh, what is also included or what is uh, a really important part of photography, right? When you're taking a picture, you are really trying to extract the subject from the background, try to make it pop or to, to, to make it the, the the main theme in the, in the image. And that's what we do also with this device, right? We're trying to uh, find a subject for a target and we want that target uh, to shine in the picture, right? And we do it through all these same uh, characteristics. I, I think photography, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, TV stars like us, we care about yes. all this stuff too, right? I yes, mean, yes, we do. Yeah, as well, it's probably the right time to shout out uh, the person behind the camera, Crystal Cotter. So thank you for being such a good photographer today. Uh, but thank you also for showing us uh, these demonstrations. I think probably one of the key, you know, examples of how it's not like photography, though, that I learned today was that machine vision can do multiple checks in one. Exactly. Scan, right. Yes. Uh, I, I, as we show, there's many things that these devices can do that, yes, I mean, that might be impossible to do for a person, right? Some things that are going really fast, things that are hard to see. Uh, and, and all this technology can help, right? In automate, automated processes and, and making sure that everything is where it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to be. So those might be, I don't know, potentially good places for a company to start. When they start looking at their processes, look at things that are, just like you said, maybe going very fast or places where it's very difficult to maintain a level of access. All right, yes. Ah, seem to be getting this. Yeah. And I can't wait to be a fixed <laughs> another scanning machine vision expert. You're an expert. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, we're going to come this way a little bit just to kind of wrap up. I don't think there are any questions, but I do want to encourage you to go ahead and add some into the chat if you like. If you don't feel comfortable, because not everybody wants to put the questions out to the world on these types of events, uh, feel free to email us at info at barcoding.com course, our website, barcoding.com. Very, very easy to remember because we just talked a lot about barcodes today. So um, definitely want to keep your eye on barcoding.com. Armando, thank you. Boris, Amita, thank you. We've got a whole crew here, but you might not have seen this person before. So we have a new special guest with us. Amit, will you please introduce yourself? Yes, so I'm Amit Astana. I, I run the RF team here and also site lead for Germantown. Uh, facility, and uh, I'm just going to give an overview of how the facility is and what we do here. Awesome. Yeah, I just think it's a great way to kind of end our time here. Great. So, so this facility in the Great Lakes, you have uh, seen machine vision and uh, the experience center that we have here. Uh, this space uh, is usually used for live testing of our products. So you can see up on the ceiling we have. Uh, Leaders, they are in excess of 1,000 sitting um, plant leaders, and they're used for kind of traction. So we, we do tests on them. Then we, we can also have tools here um, that, that can be configured for uh, testing uh, for, for different uh, proof of contact concept testing. We have a doctor here, which is a ground level doctor that can be used. Uh, 
for trucks mounted uh, tests that you have for vehicles, and then we have structures that can um, mold to fit uh, different RFID readers uh, for portal kind of applications. So this is a very living space. Uh, we we do a lot of tests here, and this space can be used for um, multiple things, the shape shifts, right? So whatever proof of concept we want to do, we can do that. We have a couple of conference rooms here. Uh, one is a larger size, it's 16 people. The smaller size will take six people or so, so that you're free to come and use. Um, and uh, that, that's that's where the space It's very like living space, so it can be configured in it. So that's just an overview of the CDT. Yes, thank you so much, Amit. I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily showing, but it's quite a big space and right. there's quite a lot that uh, is already set up here. And, and, you know, I could imagine doing all sorts of cool proof of concepts uh, with customers here. So really appreciate you all opening up Zebra Technologies, opening up their Germantown, Maryland facility for us. Um, as, as Amit mentioned, there is some really nice space for meetings. So Barcoding would be happy to set up some time for you if you'd like to come down here with us and check it out. It's, it is a very nice space. Um, I've tested the coffee and the snacks. Good. Um, but yeah, we would love to have you. So thank you so much for your time. So uh, you, you just want to join me back on camera? I hate to be by myself here for the, for the final thought. But uh, so I, I really appreciate everyone here at Zebra Technology. Thank you so much. We, you guys have been an incredible partner over the years. Obviously, these types of opportunities, it just shows us what a strong future we have together and how much more we can do. And at barcoding, something that we truly, truly believe in and we take to heart is this concept around start with why. And so I think when we're starting to get all excited and geeked out on new technology, it's a good reminder to go back and start to think about why you want to do uh, make certain changes in your organization and where you can have the most impact starting with those processes that you want to improve, those places where maybe we're going to be able to receive the most impact. Think about the people who are involved, um, where are people maybe not in the best fit and maybe where they can be used in more valuable ways and in more human ways and allow the machines to kind of do machine stuff, which would be um, you know, kind of best case for everybody. And then it's the appropriate time to call barcoding and let us help you um, really architect a solution that's going to, to work for your organization. But as we saw today, lots of different use cases, lots of different applications. Um, so don't be shy, get those wheels turning. You'll take any and all inquiries that you might have out there. So one of the things we love to do on Huddle, even if this isn't like a traditional Huddle, is we like to end with um, some, some final thoughts. And what I usually put to every panelist or person who's with me is just kind of a, a question on maybe summing it up. What is that final piece of advice or that key takeaway that you want to leave the audience with today um, based on our conversation? And uh, I'm going to start with Nick because he was last there and first off. So um, what's, that, what's that last piece of advice you give about the Experience Center to the audience today? Um, I think just utilize the space. We, we, we have a lot of capabilities here, um, all encompassing uh, the different solutions that we, we provide. And we are very nice here. So we are very <laughs> uh, Please do utilize uh, our space. And uh, there's a build process put together for scheduling and all that. So it's, it's, it's a good thing. Awesome. All right, Boris, how about you? Yeah, I think it's uh, what we're seeing is a lot of different use cases for our cameras. I kind of named them for head scanning, the line scanning, we saw all the demos. But our customers are getting creative with the need for you know automation, the lack of people. Come to us with any questions. You know, we said it, right? Don't be afraid to ask for, hey, can your camera do this or can we do that? Because we're getting it all today. So we want you to be a part of this. We want you guys to get us requesting, hey, I've got, I need something scanned or I need something inspected in this scenario or with this way. Yes, we can do it. We'll find a way to do it. Um, so again, don't be shy and yeah, come to us and be creative with what you need because there's definitely automation is the way to go now. So yeah. love it, love it, uh, Armando. How about you next? Yeah, uh, I would say just uh, to embrace this right as an as an opportunity, right? To embrace this as an option, 
So there's a lot of things these devices can do. And the only way to know if they're actually going to help you or not is to give it a try, right? So I, I really would uh, say, uh, let, let's try to find solutions together. Right? Let's try to, to make it work, right? If it works, great. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Don't buy it, right? But uh, let, let's be, or let's give it a try. And uh, I'm pretty sure we can do a lot of things with technology together. Great. Anita. Hey, I'll wrap it up. So um, I would really encourage you to reach out to your barcoding representative and have them help you plan a date here to test out uh, or learn about any of these new technologies, and how they can help your business um, become more efficient, reduce errors, um, whatever business outcome you want to drive, we can help you. Our Germantown facility is um, focused on our industrial scanning, our machine vision, and RFID. We also have centers in Lincolnshire, Illinois, and Hiltzville, New York. So we have multiple facilities, uh, depending on what solutions and where you're located. Um, we want to help you achieve your business goal. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do these virtual. So if you don't want to travel, um, we have helped so many companies over the course of the past two years uh, with virtual visits as well. Awesome. And for those who may not know, Germantown, very close to DC, very close to Baltimore. Um, as you know, Barcoding Inc. is headquartered in Baltimore, Maryland. And Crystal and I, uh, quick and easy, less than an hour down here. So um, definitely would love to see you. And uh, yeah, it, we, we all look forward to greeting you in the future and being back in person. So I don't know. It's so amazing, amazing, right? right? It's so amazing. <laughs> it's been good. Uh, so thank you, Zebra. We really appreciate your time. I'm going to pause any questions in the chat. You guys did such a great job. There are no questions. <laughs> OK, that's all right. I understand folks are shy. Um, but thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for watching uh, this production. And um, thank you for being part of the Barcoding Inc. and Zebra community. We really appreciate it. We have a few events coming up. We will be at Modex. So please come to Modex and check uh, out our booth, check out our speaking sessions. We have all that information on our events page on barcoding.com. And finally, all of the recordings for these huddles, if you enjoyed this one, there's many more like it that you can kind of check out. These are all available on our YouTube channel. So not to sound like you know, a YouTuber, but go ahead and hit that subscribe button and, uh, and join us for the long haul because we've got lots more interesting stuff coming your way this year. So thank you again, Zebra. Thanks for being a great partner. Thank you all for, for watching and we'll see you on the next Barcoding Huddle. Thanks. Bye. Hi, did you enjoy the huddle? I sure hope so. We were really excited to have you as part of our conversation and would love to continue it. If you have a question or a challenge that you're facing and Barcoding can help you out, please reach out. You can contact us on barcoding.com anytime or any of our social media channels. Again, we're, we are here to help and would love to chat with you. Final ideas. Did you like the huddle so much you wanted to join? Do you want to come on air with me? Do you know someone who would be a great fit or a topic that you'd like to see covered? If so, reach out to me um, via email or LinkedIn, and I am happy to uh, check in with you and, and talk through what we might be able to accomplish together. I would love to hear your ideas. We're always looking for new topics. So. If you have an idea for Huddle or you'd like to be on a Huddle, contact me and we will make it happen. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.